Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Brighton 750 SE Bike GPS Cycling Computer. When the Brighton Rider 750 was originally introduced, it was Brighton's top of the line cycling computer with an interactive colored touchscreen. Brighton has been quite busy since then expanding their Rider GPS lineup and introducing a new Sport S series to go after the premium GPS market. In this review, we're going to be looking at the latest version of the 750 computer, the Brighton Rider 750 SE which adds a sleeker design and updated performance. In terms of packaging, you see very simple. You have a nice glossy illustration of the computer on the front, the green and white color scheme that Brighton is known for, basic specs printed on the back and sides as well. We'll go ahead and open this up and go over the specs. Retail price on this is $249.95. It's actually cheaper than the original 750 retail price. You still have a 2.8 inch color touchscreen with a 240 by 400 pixel display. This has on-device rerouting, so if you get lost, you can actually use the preloaded maps on the device to actually get you back home. And you also have access to all the new features uh, Brighton has. So you have group ride and chat, so you can communicate with other Brighton computer users and actually see them on the map. You have their climb challenge, which is really cool. You can see all the climbs for the route you selected and the individual gradients, and I'll actually count down the number of climbs you have left and the distance. So a really nice way to ride. And you also have voice navigation, so you can talk to it to find points of interest using the attached app. In terms of what comes with it, you can see pretty simple setup. We have the computer with this little protective screen overlay on here. You have this nice portrait style screen, updated graphics, so it really lines up with the S series. You have a safety lanyard, which you can connect to the little bottom attachment point for a little bit of extra safety. USB Type-C charging cable. You have their basic handlebar mount. It's also available with bundles, so you can get out front mount. But this one includes a simple plastic design with the O-rings. Then you have the instruction manual and warranty information pamphlets. Now let's take a look at the weight of the computer. The computer by itself that comes in at 94 grams, so fairly light given the large size of the display. Visually, the Brighton Rider SE ditches Brighton's previous notched corner design with a more modern, smooth profile. In fact, the 750 SE would be easy to mistake for the S800 as it shares the same bezel shape and the white divider long line along the edges. So pretty sleek and modern, although it is a little more generic in terms of the design and shape. It has a 2.8 inch screen, so it actually slots between the S500 and S800 in terms of display size. You can see it does feel pretty nice. You have no exposed hardware. It's a plastic body, but it has a nice weight to it. In terms of mounting, you can see it has the Brighton puck. It's pretty similar to the Garmin. You have these two tabs that stick out, and you have a corresponding puck that you slide it in and then do a quarter turn to lock it in place. You can't really use this with a Garmin. You can force it in there, but it'll actually end up bending these tabs. So I highly recommend using a Brighton specific mount. It includes the standard handlebar mount that we saw earlier with the rubber straps, but I highly recommend using their Sport out front mount or other brands that have a Brighton specific puck. In terms of display, you can see it's a 2.8 inch screen, which is quite tall and large. So you have good visibility on here, fairly large bezels on the top and bottom and more narrow ones on the edges. You have the labels for the buttons printed on here. So you have a power, left and right arrows, and then a record and pause. The Brighton logo is on the bottom, and then of course you have Brighton on the front, which is the one most people will actually see. You can see that white line also extends all the way around and breaks up the otherwise all black appearance. As far as the user interface, you can see there's actually four physical buttons on here. You do have a touch screen though, and most of the interaction will be the touch screen. The top left one is power. So if I hold that, you see it turns on. You have left and right arrows here. And that's great for switching between screens or user profiles. So you can see if I go into record mode, I can actually switch between the different screens. Then you have the pause and play. But most of the interaction obviously is the touch screen. So you can't actually get through most of the interface with just the buttons. You actually have to touch. And you can see the color on here is not that bad. It is a little bit washed out. So the red here actually looks a little more dim, but otherwise the display looks good. 
you can see you have nice crisp letters, you have multiple graphic options here, and a full color display to really brighten everything up. It also supports a bunch of gestures, so if you do swipes, you can swipe up to go back to the main menu. You can do swipe left and right to switch between different screens. You can also do long hold, which is really cool. So if I do a long hold here and then click, I can actually change things on demand while I'm writing. So it's fully configurable and you can do everything directly on here with touch. You can also lock the screen if you press the top left button. And that's great if you're somewhere it's rainy and you don't want to accidentally switch screens or activate something. And then unlock. They've really simplified it though. They got rid of the lap button. Before there was a lap one. Now you have the left and right, which seems to really only work for switching between the current display. Now let's take a look at some writing footage with the computer. The Brighton is super easy to set up. You basically just turn it on and it's ready to use. You want to input your own metrics, such as weight, height, gender, and all those other things to get a little more specific things like heart rate zones. But otherwise, it's ready to go as the GPS will give you speed, distance, and altitude. If you want to connect sensors, it's really easy. You just go to the main screen, go to settings, and then you can connect whatever you need to do, and then use the app to adjust things. With this, you can also do the on-the-fly edit. So even if as you're riding, you want to change one of the data screens, it's really easy. Just hold, and then you can change it on the fly, which is a great feature. But also, the other nice thing about Brighton computers is their map view. So really intuitive design. You have a big color map, nice bright color so you can easily see where you are, and you have a nice dark theme so everything has high contrast. The prompts are also really nice, so you get big prompts when you have a turn. And it has a little illustration of the intersection, which makes it really easy to determine which one you have to go to. Otherwise, you can get lost really easily if it just says go right or go left. If you do go off route, it does tell you that. And as you can see here, I'm supposed to be on that main purple route on the left, but it keeps trying to reroute me backwards. So on these more rural roads, I'll tend to send you back. So you'll backtrack a little bit to get back on route. But it is nice to have the rerouting feature, so if you do miss a turn accidentally, it will send you back and it makes it a lot easier and with the color schemes on here again really easy and they have arrows so it's very easy to figure out where you're going and you can customize everything here as well so the bottom two displays you can swap those out for different data so if you prefer to use map view you can use that with speed rings or whatever you need so overall really easy to configure the size of the screen is a little bit smaller though at 2.8 inches so compared to the s800 the font sizes are a little bit on the smaller side so if you do have vision issues you do want to maybe use less rows of data or just be aware the font size is a little bit on the smaller side. The other nice feature about the Brighton computers is you get the climb challenge. So here you can see a nice color coded altitude chart and it'll actually split up your ride based on the climbs and then you can adjust the start and end as well. So a really fun feature and it really lets you see where you are on the climb, how much is left and lets you better gauge how much effort to put. It's one of our favorite features and once you have it, uh, it's really nice to have and you kind of miss it if you don't have it. So, and then the main screen, you have the nice speed ring, which I like. So you can see the current speed, maximum speed, and average all in one place. So again, nice setup. I would do wish the font size was slightly bigger, but otherwise really easy to use and you get all the cool features from Brian. So the voice navigation, other features are all built in directly. Now let's take a look at the Brighton app. As you can see, it's a fairly well-designed app. You have four tabs on the bottom. You have a homepage which shows you a summary of your results. The plus icon which lets you create new navigation courses, do new workouts or live tracking as well as the group ride feature which is a really nice one. Then you have your profile page where you can set up your units and then basic specs about yourself to set up the correct heart rate zones. And then on the final one you have the gear icon which shows you the devices. So we've already connected the 750SE in here and you can see we have the syncing enabled. We can do a lot of bike settings so you can set up the profiles and with the app you can actually go beyond the basic labels and you can make your own, which is really nice. So you can relabel them. Uh, you can set the number of pages and you can personalize each profile. So pretty nice setup. And then with the notifications, you can allow those or not allow them. So that'll show up on the device. You can do sensor. So you can see what's connected, add more. You have more general settings. And these are a lot of the items that are duplicated within the settings view of the computer as well. So. You can see if I go here, a lot of these settings are duplicated, but it's a lot easier to do on your phone and quicker. You can do the voice setting, general, and just about everything you need. The nice thing about this is you can also customize the page layout. So if we go to a bike setting, if I pick a bike profile, 
I can change the name here, which is nice. I can rename these. I go to page, data page. And now you can actually set up what pages are visible and really customize it. So if you go to, say, the mountain biking view, you can see the number of pages that I can scroll through. I can adjust all those. I can change what's available. So if I go to page one, here I get a nice graphical view that mimics what you actually see here. So you can change the ring to whatever you want. The UI is not great. It's this kind of wheel effect. So you have to kind of scroll around, find what you want. And there's different categories like time, speed, distance, and then sub variables within there. So within hard rate, you can do just about anything, lap hard rate, average hard rate. And with this, you can connect almost anything. So tons of options here and even the Shimano e-bike stuff. So you can see your battery system level. You have the graphical views, which is a great feature of these higher end computers. You get the ring display, you get bar charts, and then you can display different data in more unique ways. So pretty simple. And once you pick one, you can see it'll replace it. You can also change the layout pretty easily. So this is the 6A option. And then a little bit of lag on the app, but you can see I can switch between 5, A, B, and then variations. So you can do bigger items, smaller items. So if you want bigger fonts, you can reduce the number of visible items and then use the graphs to take up the additional space. It's a pretty nice setup and the Brighton app has come a long way. It's, it was a little bit clumsy before with mistranslations, but now they've actually improved things quite a bit. So a lot easier to use. And then of course you can always just use this to sync with third party apps like the Strava or ride with GPS to analyze your data or view summaries there. Now let's do a little comparison between the Brighton 750 SE and other computers on the market. We actually have both the S series models here. This is the S500, a little bit smaller screen, and you can see not quite as tall. Same interface, but the display on here is a little bit brighter. So you can see the colors on here. If you compare the same red to the other red, this is a little bit brighter while this is a little bit dimmer. But otherwise very similar. You can see same design. This one has the notch profile on the screen, while this one has the more smooth version. If we look at the S800, that's one, the one this one really looks like. You have the same round profile with that white line. It's a pretty modern, if not a little bit generic appearance. Four buttons, lanyard on the bottom, so very similar. They both have the USB Type-C port underneath it. And this one actually has an interchangeable mount design. So you can see here, this actually comes off and you can swap it in and out. While the one on the uh, 750SE is actually molded in, so you can't swap it out, unfortunately. Otherwise, you can see the S800 is a bigger screen. It's more expensive. So everything's larger. The font size is bigger. I think the display is a little bit nicer as well. But both of them have good viewing angles. So you can see as you turn these, you can still see the text really well. So from any position on the bike, it is visible. There are more affordable computers on the market as well, like the IGP Sport Beast SC300. Also has a color display, but it is not touch screen. So you can see... When you go into a mode, switch back, you have more buttons, smaller display, and not quite as many features as the Brighton. So the nice thing about Brighton is you have all those features like the uh, group ride, you have the climb challenge, a lot of features you don't see in lower end computers. And the Rider 750 is still quite affordable compared to the Garmin and Wahoo's on the market. It's a pretty cool computer and it's great to see Brighton actually updated has better performance, looks better, and has more features than the original. Now let's go over the pros and cons of the Brighton 750 SE. What we like about it is as an updated modern design, it's much more in line with the S series. So you have a nice white ring and rounded corners. It also has on-device rerouting with a very intuitive color touchscreen, so it's easy to switch between screens, and you have bright colors so you can see everything. This computer also features all of Brighton's high-end features like the Climb Challenge and Group Ride and Chat, so you can actually keep track of other people on the ride, and then see a color-coded graph of where you are in a certain climb. The main cons for this computer is the fact that it is a Brighton-only mount, so it's not Garmin compatible, it's just a little bit thicker, so you have to make sure you have a mount for it. And with the 2.8-inch screen, it's a little bit small in terms of the tech size, so compared to the S800, which is much larger, this feels just a little bit more cramped. Taking everything into account would give the computer a 9.2 out of 10. It's a sleeker shape and a lot of the high-end features that Brian is known for. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.